ocean conservation. We've been hearing a lot about that lately, haven't we? I know, it's intimidating. And let me tell you, making this video really scared me. But these stories you're about to hear is what ultimately motivated me to just get over it and do it. This is the Biosphere Foundation of Northwest Bali. And last summer, I reached out and to my excitement, I've been given the opportunity to tell their stories. Okay, but before we get too cringy, let's start at the beginning. Once I arrived in South Bali, I made my way up to the northwest, to a smaller village called Pajanakan. Here is one of the gateways to Menjangan Island. This tiny paradise is unlike the rest of Bali. It's a marine reserve part of Bali Barat National Park, and that for good reason. The reefs here are spectacular. But more on that later. First, let's meet Biosphere Foundation. And we are filming. <laughs> Great. So this is Biosphere Foundation's field station. Uh, there are three of us who live here full-time. Myself, Rosa, and Sierra. But full disclosure, we won't be able to share everybody's stories here. That would be a full-length documentary. But this one, wouldn't be complete without the cliche house tour and cooking shots. So here you go. Trying to break it up a little bit. Meet Rosa, our first story. So I already started my program, um, like implementing waste management in Northwest Bali. That was my main goal. Because even here, in these quieter corners of Bali, we got a problem. It's isolated places like these that are particularly in danger. With no means to get rid of its trash, people result to burning. With everybody burning their trash like this, the amount of smoke is intense. It's ready. Good to go. And this isn't just a problem for local households. After lunch, Rosa and I went to the back of one of the high-end resorts and there was this huge private landfill, where again, rubbish would just be burned. We also headed out a bit further to a public landfill this time, where yet again, rubbish would just be burned. In this time of year, it's quite windy, and this trash is just blowing everywhere. And guess where that ends up? The plastic in the ocean is a big problem here. And um, it's not only from Bali, it comes from everywhere. Sometimes I say trash travels, because it really does, it, it travels with the currents. This is especially noticeable for the tourism industry. I visited one of the dive centers in the area, and I had a little talk with instructors Jenny and Komai. It's gonna be very, very short what she actually uses in the video. Like many dive centers, they often do underwater cleanups. Okay, so you and me, we went to pause two. Point. And got all that so much garbage and tires out of the water. Yeah. Now what happens to it? Where does the garbage go? So, the garbage. Yeah, the garbage that we collect and take out of the water, what happens to it? Not so far from here, maybe around half an hour. Mm -hmm. We call Pajara and Phillips. So we store the garbage to this place and what, ha what happened in the next on there I never know <laughs> that's the point exactly <laughs> exactly so we do all this work we spend our money and our time going to collect all of this garbage and then are we going back and collecting the same garbage again and again and again out of the dive site should we start marking the garbage so that we can see, oh, we picked this up before? <laughs> yeah, that's true. So maybe we try to find solution. How, what, what we do about the garbage after we took from the island, not back to the ocean again. Yeah. 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 Now this is where Rosa comes in. Rosa and her team have been clearing one of the public landfills and are turning it into a waste management facility. Without burning this time. We 
had already cleaned up that place twice. They were like small hills of, of trash everywhere. This space would be used as a place to sort and then dispose of waste in a controlled manner. But there was a challenge. Sometimes up to 15, 20 monkeys just scavenging and going through the trash looking for easy food. And some of the rangers and us were afraid of the next generations of those monkeys because they would lose their ability to find food in the forest See, and, and become lazy monkeys. So now these monkey-proof recycling bins have been put in place. The next step would be for people to actually use them. So Rosa has been taking these kids from the neighborhood on trash walks like these. You've been saying to me two days ago that you saw them pick up the trash, yes. even though you were not on yes. the trash walk. That was that that blew my mind. It was I was so happy to see them. I saw the kids, the same kids that have been tr trash walking with me. I saw them collecting the bottles and the cans and the recyclables that are refundable. They got the message, trash is valuable. But in order for a sustainable future to be possible, involving people from the community like this is key. So the next day, I got to meet one of Biosphere Foundation's first local advocates. My name is Nono, and we are now at Bali Barat National Park. And uh, I work here um, officially as a guide, yeah, as a park guide. 1997, we felt that we lose a lot of coral, and we noticed that it caused by the crown of thorn starfish. These starfish actually feed on coral. And if you look closely, you can see these dark dead patches where the starfish has been feeding on. This, on a grand scale, can threaten the collapse of entire coral reefs. And here, without the reef, pretty much everybody would be affected. When I was there, I'd notice fishing boats after fishing boats, nets, fishermen and their families selling their catches of the day. Fishing is a huge part of their daily lives. And on the other hand, those with the more recent job opportunities from tourism are not off the hook either. Pun unintended, by the way. And this is Sonor, a snorkeling guide at the Manjungan Resort. When there are not many, not many tourists come to Bali or come, not come to Manjungan Island, I don't have a job. For... So we start to do our first project here with Bali Barat National Park to remove them away from coral. When we went out, we collected around 750 in two hours. That's two of these buckets. But manual removal like this is not a long-term solution. Stressors from increased activity on the island, like overfishing of predators, may explain the starfish outbreak. So Nono has been spreading the word. And it's through awareness like this that can lead to transformation. This brings us to our last story. Meet Sutama. Before we met, uh, when we met with the permission, I met fishermen. A fisherman is uh, collecting the live fish, like uh, with the shiny, like that also bomb fishing, but it's very bad. I think long, long time, about two years, I work like that every day. So because I must, I have the family, I need money. But in Bali, I don't have another job before. So one night, I despair fishing and then collect uh, the fish in, inside in the national park. And the security from National Park um, just catch me and then it's bring to the office. Someone from National Park talk about the conservation, but I'm not understanding. 
And then from national park, they give me information. You must uh, try for the guiding. Every day, if my friend uh, have a guest for go to Manjangan Island, I following them, and snorkeling, and then surprise my life. And because I never see like that before, so many many fishes, many many is kind of the coral. I like it. Then then I start from there. I must the uh, care about uh, protect the coral also. Like that. Today, Zutama works as a dive master, now showing the underwater world to more and more people. So we went on a dive. And it was quite unusual. Instead of searching for some peculiar fish or looking up for sharks, we focused on coral. Zutama taught me a lot about them, from their biology to how to care for them. I've never met a dive master with this kind of approach before. His excitement for corals is just super contagious. This a change, change the, the, the job. Before it's collecting the fish for aquarium, coral also. So many, many, many people uh, like me now. The reef here is amongst the healthiest I've seen around Bali. And it's great that more people get to experience it. But ironically, it's also that what causes another issue. If we don't have a uh, mooring buoy there. That's still the anchor. Maybe coral is one month is coral in Manjangan. All is 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 broken. Together with the Biosphere Foundation and the National Park, Zutama goes out around once a month to maintain these mooring buoys. They had to come up with some pretty creative constructs because sometimes the materials from the boys were taken. But awareness is spreading. Maybe we're only two, two people, me and Nono. And it's a long, long time. So many people uh, come from uh, Friendship Manjangan, like a boat driver. It's stories like Sutama's that help make conservation part of both the tourism and fishing industry. I mean, they even got team t-shirts now, so that's gotta count for something. Alright, so at this point, I initially planned to finish the video. Everybody told their stories, we are inspired, done. But then, at the very end of his interview, Zutama mentioned something that changed it completely. Basically, I had to rewrite the entire script. <laughs> So you, you learned English yeah. through through working. When I first met Sutama, he didn't speak English. I cannot speak English. At English. All. Every night I bring book, you know? Every night. All these stories here are made possible because people took a risk. A risk with the intimidating power to change the way we think. I came to Northwest Bali with the intent to help spread some environmental awareness. But by taking a glimpse into the behind the scenes, I realized I really don't know anything. I mean, especially as travelers, it's so easy for us to be ignorant to these issues, even though we oftentimes directly contribute to them. It's scary, I, I get it. But the team of the Biosphere Foundation overcame that fear. It was like a dream come true because these people are like rock stars <laughs> in the environmental and conservation world. Yeah, well, I mean, these people, you're part of these people. Yeah, so well, yeah, I, I never dreamed of working with Paisford Foundation, but you know. Because with that, we can make extraordinary stories like these become the norm. And that counts whether you're a kid, fisherman or traveler. Just ask yourself, am I still learning or have I settled for the easy?